welcome back to the lecture on quantum chemistry or principles of quantum mechanics. This is the third lecture giving some more details on the mathematics, basic mathematics, particularly matrices and the algebra of matrices. In the last lecture, we looked at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a simple 2 by 2 matrix and then I gave you some examples to work out as problems. We shall continue that in this lecture since eigenvalues and eigenvectors are fundamentally important quantities in quantum mechanics. The Schrodinger equation particularly the time independent Schrodinger equation uh, which commonly people read as H psi is equal to E psi where H is the Hamiltonian and psi is the wave function and E the energy eigenvalue. That Schrodinger equation is an eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian matrix or the Hamiltonian operator and the size or eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator and a major activity in quantum mechanics is to determine the eigenfunctions once the Hamiltonian is known and therefore uh, the elementary properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors that we uh, examine we examined in the last lecture and the ones we will look at in this lecture and probably later on uh, these are extremely important for you to keep in mind as they will come again and again. Okay. So let me start with today's lecture. So we are on to the third lecture. Okay, so lecture 3 properties or I will say more properties of matrices. Okay. I am Mangala Sundar from the chemistry department of IIT Madras. This lecture is brought to you through the funding and the support of the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning uh, organized by the IITs and the Indian Institute of Science and funded by the Ministry of Human Resource Development. Okay. So uh, again like the last two lectures we shall divide this into some two or three smaller parts and in the first part of the lecture which is about say 15 to 20 minutes. I shall talk about a couple of uh, elementary properties as well as uh, definitions that we have to worry about. So let us look at the properties of the traces, determinants and some simple matrices like the orthogonal, unitary and Hermitian matrices. We shall follow this with uh, specific properties of Hermitian matrices uh, because Hermitian matrices are the most directly useful quantities in the quantum mechanics particularly the Hamiltonian matrix and any other matrix of operator which is an observable or an experimentally measurable quantity uh, those matrices are all Hermitian. So we shall study the properties of Hermitian matrices a little more only 
to the point that we need them and not worry about the formal details. So, first we will uh, do look at the traces and determinants and after doing this I shall give you the example of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a 3 by 3 matrix that I promised in the last lecture. But these properties are important and I have sort of put them in between the eigenvalues of a 2 by 2 matrix and eigenvalues of a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. So, let us look at the trace. If there are two matrices A and B such that A B is not equal to B A, that is they do not commute. We still have the trace of A B is equal to the trace of B A. It is easy to verify because suppose we write A by the elements A i j and B by the elements B i j then A B matrix element i j would be the sum over the column index k or row index as you see it A i k b k j. Okay. The trace of a b is nothing but the sum of the diagonal elements of a b a b i i and therefore, we can immediately write that the trace of a b is given by sum over k, it is the i i matrix element. So, instead of j we have i, so it is a i k b k j, but summed over all i as well okay, k i. a i k k i, okay. but these, these being numbers a i k and b k i being complex numbers or real numbers or whatever, we can rewrite this as i k b k i a i k and this is easily seen as sum over k sum over i b k i a i k and you can write immediately that this particular sum is the matrix element k k of the matrix b a. K k and what we have is the sum over k therefore, this is the trace of b a. Okay. So, this is an extremely important property namely trace of two matrices uh, so A B is equal to the trace of B A. From this it follows immediately that when we have more than two matrices we should follow a cyclic order. Namely if you want to write trace A B C three matrices then there are different ways of associating them. So, if you do A and B C as another matrix, then this is the same as the trace of this B C matrix which is a product times A by exactly this interchange. The result of B C is a matrix anyway. So, A times that is the same as that times A, one relation. Now, instead of A, B, C, if you do the following trace of A, B, C and write this as trace of A, B, the result of A, B being a matrix times C, that is the same as trace of C times A, B. 
and therefore you see that the trace of ABC is cyclically invariant namely it is equal to trace of B C A in that order A B C order and that is equal to trace of C A B. So, this is a very simple way of uh, looking at the trace property of uh, products of matrices, but they are cyclically invariant except when A and B that is the only case that A B is e the trace of A B is equal to the trace of B A and if A and B commute the product A B itself is equal to the product B A. So, we do not we have a trivial identity that the trace of the matrix is equal to the trace of itself. I mean it does not need anything uh, beyond that, but if the matrices do not commute this property is still important. Okay. In the same way we can talk about the determinant of the two matrices A B is equal to the determinant of B times A. Okay. And you can see that this gives rise to the same cyclical invariance for the determinant of the product of many matrices N if you do that it is determinant of B C N times A which is uh, the same as determinant of if you repeat this several times you will get N uh, A B C dot. We made use of these two properties in the eigenvalues and eigenvectors determination in the last lecture when we said that the sum of the eigenvalues uh, is the same as the trace of the original matrix and the product of the eigenvalues of the matrix is the same as the determinant of the original matrix. I mean there we did make use of these cyclical relations, but we see where they come from basically from the elementary definition of matrix multiplication. Okay. Now, uh, the other part that we need to worry about is two more special matrices called orthogonal and unitary matrices. Okay. A matrix A is orthogonal if its inverse is given by a, the transpose of the matrix. This means that the determinant of A is never 0 because the inverse exists. The transpose of any matrix can be obtained by transposing the rows and columns. Therefore, if that has to be equal to the inverse of the matrix obviously, the uh, determinant of that matrix has to be non-zero. But if you look at it carefully when you write A A T which is the same as A A inverse matrices. Okay. If a inverse is equal to A T then A A T is equal to the identity matrix. Therefore, determinant of A A T is equal to the determinant of 1 which is of course, 1 the identity matrix. So, what you have is you have the determinant of A squared please remember A T the determinant of A T is the same as the determinant of A therefore, A A T is the same as the determinant A whole square or is equal to the determinant of 1 which is identity which implies that the determinant of A has to be either plus 1 or minus 1. And the case of plus 1 A is known as special orthogonal matrix. Now, if we examine this a little bit further, when we write A A T is equal to 1 that is the identity matrix, what we imply is that the element of the product matrix A A T i j 
the ijth element of a a t is since this is a uh, an identity matrix on the right side has to be the Kronecker delta delta i j. Okay. Now, you can write this again a a t i j in terms of the elements of a and so if we do that it is sum over k a i k and the matrix a t k j and that is equal to delta i j. Okay. But the matrix a t k j is nothing other than a j k therefore, it is sum over k a i k a j k is equal to delta i j. So, if I write this matrix by Uh, say a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 uh, 1 3 a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 a 3 1 a 3 2 a 3 3. And if I say that this is an orthogonal matrix then from this relation you see that a i k times a j k keeps the columns constant. Therefore, you take i k, k is equal to 1 here sorry the i and j are constant the columns are summed over. Therefore, uh, you have summing over elements of uh, two different rows, row i which is for example, if i is 1 it is the first row, if j is 2 it is the second row. Then a 1 1 a 2 1 times a 1 2 a 2 2 times a 1 3 a 2 3 is of course, since it is uh, 1 and 2 is 0. If you take a 1 1 with itself, a 1 2 with itself, a 1 3 with itself that is a 1 1 square, a 1 2 square and a 1 3 square you sum them over then you should get 1. So, this is also known as rho orthogonality. The rows are orthogonal to each other. Now, a t a is also equal to the identity okay, and uh, that immediately gives you the column orthogonality. You can write that by saying a t a i j is equal to delta i j and so what you have on the left hand side is the sum over k a t of i k a k j is equal to delta i j and the left hand side this is uh, sum over k a t i k is a k i a k j is equal to delta i j. And if you look at the matrix here a k i a k j summed over k means a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 a 3 1 a 3 2. So, we take a column and we take another column if we multiply the two columns the element by element and then add them all up it gives you 0. Whereas, if you take the same column the column of elements a 1 1 a 2 1 a 3 1 and multiply them with themselves a 1 1 themselves a 2 1 and a 3 1 and that gives you 1. Therefore, the columns are normalized to 1 the columns are orthogonal to the other columns, the rows are normalized to one, the rows are orthogonal to the other rows and this is the property of the, an orthogonal matrix. Now, a unitary matrix differs only in a very small extent in that the inverse of a unitary matrix which we now call not A, but let us call that by, let us write that by U. The unitary matrix is u inverse is the u dagger or the Hermitian adjoint. adjoint. Okay. Hermitian adjoint is u dagger is u t star transpose complex conjugate. So, if you are writing the matrix element u inverse i j it is u dagger 
all of matrices u dagger i j and u dagger i j is u t star which means u j i star. Okay. This is the property of unitary matrices, this is the definition of unitary matrix that is the inverse of the unitary matrix is equal to the Hermitian adjoint and in this case again u u dagger therefore is equal to u dagger u and that is equal to the identity matrix 1 and in no time you can see that this means that sum over k u i k u dagger k j is equal to delta i j and u dagger k j is u j k star. So, what you will get is let me write it here k u i k u j k star is equal to delta i j and therefore, you see this is equivalent to a uh, row orthogonality because you are keeping the two rows i and j constant row orthogonality. The difference between a unitary and the orthogonal matrix is that the row orthogonality involves the complex conjugate of one of the rows. It does not matter which row you complex conjugate. When you say a number is equal to another number, its complex conjugate is equal to the complex conjugate of that number. Delta i j is 1 or 0, therefore the complex conjugate of this number is also 1 or 0. So, it does not matter which row you complex conjugate but you multiply one row with the complex conjugate of another row for a unitary matrix when you do it element wise and sum them up the answer is 0. Okay. And likewise for column orthogonality you can very easily show that sum over k u k i u k j star is equal to delta i j. So, let us uh, have a break here and right after this we will come back to looking at some properties of the Hermitian matrices and then in the last part of the lecture we shall solve the eigenvalues of a 3 by 3 matrix which has degenerate eigenvalues. Okay. So, we shall start with the properties of Hermitian matrices. What is a Hermitian matrix? A matrix A is Hermitian if it is equal to its Hermitian adjoint A dagger which is A T star. Okay. So, what you have is A i j is equal to A j i star. This is the definition of a Hermitian matrix. Okay. So, let us use the properties of Hermitian matrices uh, and let us use this property to prove a few simple results. Result 1, Hermitian matrices have real eigenvalues or let me write it this way, the eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix are always real. We will see that just in a few minutes. Okay. Now, please remember the bracket notation. When we write uh, the vectors by column and also rows, if you remember that. Okay. Keep that in mind. We may not need it now, but we will need it uh, further during this part of the lecture. So, let us define the Hermitian matrix, the eigen vector, one eigen vector of a Hermitian matrix by one eigen value lambda x. Okay. Now, remember what this stands for. This stands for a column vector x containing 
elements x 1, x 2, x n and has a Hermitian matrix h i j where i and j run from 1 to n and it is equal to lambda times x 1, x 2 to x n. Okay. So, this statement if we have to write, I can write this for one element x i the following namely sum over j h i j x j is equal to lambda times x i. Okay. The row that multiplies this column gives you that element in this row okay, here. The row here multiplied by this column gives you that row. Okay. That is what this is h i j times x j lambda x i. Let us multiply both sides by x i star and then sum over i all i's i is equal to 1 to n. So, when we do that we get the following equation namely sum over i j x i star h i j x j is equal to lambda times lambda being a constant is outside the sum i x i star x i. Okay. Since it is an equation involving uh, two quantities, two numbers, so if we complex conjugate to this equation, both left hand side should also be equal. Okay. The complex conjugate of this is i j x i h i j star x j star is equal to lambda star sum over i x i x i star, but of course, this is part is equal to this part, but lambda and lambda star we still do not know that is the whole point we wanted to show. Now, remember that for a Hermitian matrix h i j star, so this the uh, index the indices i and j are dummy indices. Therefore, if we interchange i and j throughout this sum remains the same. So, if we do that i j x j h i h j i star because we are doing that interchanging x i star nothing changes on the left hand side because these two are equal and it is still equal to lambda star sum over i x i x i star. Okay. Now, use the hermeticity property namely h j i star is equal to h i j. Therefore, what we have is sum over i sum over j x i star h i j x j is equal to lambda star sum over i x i x i star. But remember this is exactly the same as the first line that we started with namely this one sum over x i star h i j x j sum over i j and this is also sum over i and sum over j x i star h i j x j but the right hand side now has lambda times x i star x i sum over i and here it has lambda star x i x i star. Therefore, the sums are the same sum over i x i star x i and sum over i x i x i star are both the same. Therefore, what you have is lambda minus lambda star sum over i x i x i star is equal to 0 and this is non zero therefore lambda is equal to lambda star or lambda is free l okay so very simple way of verifying that the hermitian matrices have real eigen values now the second property is that the eigen vectors of hermitian matrices The eigenvectors of Hermitian matrices will be uh, there will be different eigenvectors for different eigenvalues. 
One important property is that the eigenvectors of a Hermitian matrix corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. Okay. That is what we will next show. If the eigenvalues are the same, they are not necessarily orthogonal, but they can be made orthogonal, which is the third property that we will show by defining what is known as an orthogonalization process or a Gram-Schmidt process. And then we will see how eigen vectors of uh, a Hermitian matrix with the same eigenvalues can be orthogonalized. Okay. So, these are the properties that we need to know again and again and we apply them all the time and therefore, it is important to keep this right in the beginning. Okay. The eigen vectors of a Hermitian matrix corresponding to different eigenvalues. or orthogonal. Okay. Now, for this process we shall uh, recall the bracket property namely H. We have H as the Hermitian matrix with one eigenvector x with an eigenvalue lambda 1 times x and we have another eigenvector of the same Hermitian matrix Y with another eigenvalue lambda 2 Y and we assume that lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2. Given that we want to show that X and Y are orthogonal or if you remember the bracket relations that I discussed in the previous lecture what we want to show is the inner product x y is equal to 0 is equal to y of x. Okay. This is what we wanted to verify. Now, the x is given by the columns here of course, it is given by the row y is given by the column. So, what we wanted to show is sum over i x i star y i is equal to 0 or equivalently sum over i x i y i star is equal to 0. This is what we wanted to prove. Okay. Again, we will have to use the property of the uh, Hermitian matrices. So, let us first write h on x is equal to lambda 1 on x as sum over j h i j x j is equal to lambda 1 x i and h on y is equal to lambda 2 y as sum over k h i k y k is equal to lambda 2 times y i. Okay. Let us multiply the first equation by y i star y i star multiply by y i star sum over i this equation namely j h i j x j is equal to lambda 1 x i. So, the answer is sum over i and j y i star h i j x j is equal to sum over this is i sum over i lambda 1 y i star x i. Okay. Now, if we interchange the indices here i and j we still get the same equation because they are summed over both i and j and so what you have is sum over i and j y j star h j i x j is equal to lambda 1 sum over i y i star x i. Okay. 
this is H i j star. because it is a Hermitian matrix. Therefore, what we have is sum over i, this is uh, y i, I am sorry, this is y i. So, what we have is h i j star sum over i j. Uh, when we interchange the indices i and j, we should have here a different index namely y j star h i j x i. Yeah, now, it is ok. So, what we have is h i j star y j star and uh, sum over j and we shall keep the sum over i to x i and that is equal to lambda 1 sum over i y i star x i. Okay. Now, this is the eigenvalue equation for the y and h i j star y j star will give you lambda 2 times y i and lambda is real. Therefore, what you have is sum over i lambda 2, you have y i star x i is equal to lambda 1 sum over i y i star x i. So, please remember that if you have the equation h i j y j star sum over j star the result is lambda 2 which is real therefore, its star is the same you will get y i. Okay. So, that when you substitute you get lambda 1 minus lambda 2 times sum over i y i star x i is equal to 0 and since lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 this quantity sum over i y i star x i is equal to 0 or this is the same as writing i x. The vectors y and x are orthogonal if the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 associated with the two vectors x and y are different. Okay. So, it comes out naturally from the property of the Hermitian matrix. Now, another important property is that uh, what if the eigenvalues are the same? If lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, lambda 1 minus lambda 2 is automatically 0. Therefore, if you have a matrix with what is known as the what are known as the degenerate eigenvalues that is two eigenvalues are the same, then can we show that by this process that the two eigenvectors are orthogonal? We do not have to worry about that. If two eigenvectors are there in the first place and if they are not orthogonal, it is always possible for us to orthogonalize them anyway. Okay. So, let me just to show you for a simple two eigenvectors, two vectors which are orthogonal, how we get the orthogonalized vector and with that in mind, it is immediate that even if we do not get the orthogonal eigenvectors, it is possible for us to orthogonalize them and therefore, we can assume that the eigenvectors of a Hermitian matrix are always orthogonal no matter whether the eigenvalues are the same or not because it is possible to orthogonalize them anyway. Okay. So, let me just show you that when two vectors x and y are such that, that their inner product is not 0, that is x and y are orthogonal, not orthogonal, how do we get orthogonal eigenvectors out of them? Okay. This procedure is called Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure, C H M I D T. and can be extended to any number of arbitrary vectors, I mean vectors which are not orthogonal. Okay. And it is a very simple way of visualizing what is meant by an orthogonal quantity. So, if you say that x and y 
are not orthogonal to each other. What it means that a component of y in the direction of x is non-zero, that is what it means or vice versa the component of x in the direction of y is non-zero. Therefore, if we subtract this component from that vector, what remains is obviously not going to have any common component and therefore, it is going to be an orthogonal to the original vector, that is all you do. You subtract out the non-orthogonal part of an Eigen vector from another Eigen vector through a projection process and this removal makes the resultant two Eigen vectors to be orthogonal because they do not have anything in common. It is an extremely simple way, physical way to visualize them and let me write the answers out very quickly okay, to follow the class work notation. I would uh, denote the two non-orthogonal vectors as uh, with the same eigenvalue h x 1 is equal to lambda times x 1 and h x 2 is equal to lambda times x 2. This is because the eigenvalue is doubly degenerate in this case that is the matrix has two eigenvalues which are equal and these are the corresponding eigenvectors and we have x 1, x 2 is not necessarily 0. Therefore, how do we make an eigenvector, two eigenvectors which are orthogonal out of this? First, let us define the two vectors x and y as follows. x is equal to x 1 and y is x 2 without the component of x 2 that is in the direction of x 1. The component of x 2 in the direction of x 1 is subtracted out and that is the scalar x 1, x 2 times the vector x 1. This is the component which when projected along the x 2 gives this part x 1, x 2 divided by the normalization quantity x 1, x 1. The moment we define the vector y as the vector x 2 minus the component x 1, x 2 on x 1, which uh, if you remember the bracket notation that we used can also be written as x 2 minus x 1 x 1 on x 2 divided by the length x 1 x 1 squared. You can see that this is a projection operator and when it projects on to x 2 it gives the number x 1 times x 2 multiplied by the vector x 1 and if the vectors are orthogonal to begin with then this product is 0 and therefore, uh, the two orthogonal vectors are x 1 and x 2 themselves which is equal to x and y. But if this product is non-zero then you only remove that magnitude from x 2 and then what you get as y will be now orthogonal to the vector x. Okay. So, if we take the product x y you can see that x is equal to x 1. So, it is x 1, x 2 minus x 1, x 1 times x 1, x 2 divided by x 1, x 1 and uh, you know that this goes away and so what is left over is that x 1 and x 2 this cancels out this is 0. Therefore, you see that x y is orthogonal. Okay. Now, or x and y the same Eigen values, they, do they have the same Eigen values? It is easy because h on x is the same as h on x 1, that is how we defined x and therefore, it gives you lambda times x 1. 
but what about h on y? That is also easy to see because h on y is h on x2 minus, if you remember it is x2 x1 times h on x1 divided by x1 x1 and this is of course, this is lambda times x2 minus lambda times x2 x1 on x1 divided by x1 x1. So, you have lambda times whatever is in here is the vector y. Therefore, h on y is equal to lambda times y. So, y is the eigenvector with the same eigenvalue except to that now y and x are orthogonal. So, this process is called the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. Now, what about if we have three vectors which are orthog not orthogonal, but all of which have the same eigenvalues. So, if we have a larger Hamiltonian matrix at 4 by 4, 10 by 10, 20 by 20 and if some eigenvalues are the same, how do we find for such Hermitian matrices the orthogonal components? Same process. From each vector, you remove all the components that this vector will produce when it is projected to all those vectors. You subtract them out, then you will get the eigenvectors which are orthogonal. You will have to order them. So, for example, you will have to choose one vector as a starting point as the first vector. You will have to choose x2 as the next vector, any one of them, sorry, uh, this is x. You will have to choose the second vector y as x2 minus the component of x2 in the direction of x1 and then you will have to choose z as the component of x3 in the directions of both x1 and x2 subtracted out from x3. If you do that, then obviously z will be orthogonal to both y and x and therefore, you can create a chain of orthogonal eigenvectors in a sequence with some other sequence of non-orthogonal eigenvectors. I will give that as a problem in one of the assignments, but it is important to uh, recall that these things are fundamentally important. Now, let me pause for a break and in the next 10 minutes, I shall solve the eigenvectors of a 3 by 3 matrix as an example and then we will stop here. We will continue uh, with the uh, properties of matrices in the next lecture. So, the third section will be eigenvalues of a 3 by 3 matrix. So, we shall look at the eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix. Again, with the degenerate eigenvalues. So, I shall use a well known textbook example, namely a matrix A. 5, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2. I can use any other matrix. I found that this is there in the book of Arfkin. I am just, I will solve this. This is uh, also referenced in my lecture notes. I use, uh, follow the book of George B. Arfkin and his colleague uh, uh, Weber the mathematical methods for physicists. It is one of the best books on mathematics at the graduate student level that I have come across. I use it a lot. I am thankful to the authors for having written this through several editions and now I believe the book is on the sixth edition, at least that is what I have as the latest one. And some examples occasionally I shall pick up from there even though I will try and solve mostly problems of my own. This is an example picked up from that book. Now, uh, very simple, the eigenvalues of this matrix, eigenvalues, okay. one can obtain this by the determinant of phi minus lambda 0, 2, 0, 1 minus lambda 0, 2, 0, 2. 
2 minus lambda that is equal to 0. And if you expand this immediately you get phi minus lambda times 1 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda and if you expand it along either the row or the column it does not matter plus 2 times minus 2 times 1 minus lambda is equal to 0. So, what you have is uh, 1 minus lambda times phi minus lambda times 2 minus lambda minus 4 is equal to 0. The answer is lambda is equal to 1. This is uh, 7, 10 minus 4. So, it gives you 6. So, the equation here is lambda square minus 7 lambda plus 6 and then you have 1 minus lambda and if you factor this out it is 1 minus lambda times if you factorize that you get lambda minus 6 times lambda minus 1 is equal to 0. So, you have lambda is equal to 1 as twice the eigen two eigenvalues and lambda is equal to 6 as the other eigenvalue. So, here is the degeneracy. Okay. Now, we shall use the fact that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix can always be eigenvectors of a Hermitian matrix can always be orthogonalized and therefore, we shall assume that the eigenvectors would be orthogonal. We will use that property. Okay. So, here lambda is equal to 6 the eigenvector is easy to obtain. You have 5, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2. You have this is lambda 1, then you have x 1, 1, x 2, 1, 3 1 is equal to 6 times x 1 1 x 2 1 x 3 1. So, the equations that you get are minus hmm, minus x 1 1 plus 2 x 3 1 is equal to 0 and here you get anyway minus 5 x 2 1 is equal to 0 and this the third equation that you get is obviously going to be the same thing namely minus 2 x 1 1 plus 4 x 3 1 is equal to 0. These two are one and the same. So, you have got the equation that x 1 1 is equal to 2 x 3 1 and x 2 1 is equal to 0. So, the eigenvector not normalized is 2 a 0 a and if you normalize it you will cancel the a out and you will get 2 by root 5 0 1 by root 5. This is one eigenvector. Now, the eigenvector 2 for eigenvalue 1. So, when you write that you will see the redundancy right away 5 0 2 0 1 0 2 0 2 x 1 2 x 2 2. So, this is x 3 2 is equal to 1 times x 1 2 x 2 2 x 3 2 but since one happens twice there are two such columns that we have to find out. So, let us call this one as lambda 2 is equal to 1 okay, that is why this 2 and you can see immediately that it is 4 x 1 2 plus 2 uh, x 3 2 is equal to 0 and you have x 2 2 minus x 2 2. So, it is there is no other equation because this x 2 2 will cancel off with this x 2 2. So, x 2 2 is arbitrary. In addition to or uh, undetermined, in addition to one of the two being arbitrary, 
that is what it is when you have a degenerate Eigen value, doubly degenerate Eigen value. If you have a triply degenerate Eigen value, you will see that two of the Eigen vector coefficients will become, uh, will not be involved in any equation in addition to the third one. So, you will see that these things uh, are not without any structure. I mean, there is a fundamental structure, the Eigen values uh, reveal that when you look for the symmetry that is degeneracy refers to some hidden symmetry in the system and here the question is we do not know anything about x 2 2. We know that x 1 2 has to be half of minus the half of uh, uh, x 3 2. Okay. So, we have one equation we can choose x 2 to be either 0 or x 2 2 to be a constant. Okay. So, both choices are possible x 1 2 is of course, is equal to minus x 3 2 by 2. Okay. Therefore, if we choose x 2 2 is equal to 0, then the Eigen vector that we have is 1 by root 5 0 minus 2 by root 5 or if I put the minus here, I will get plus here. What about choosing x 2 2 is equal to a? If we choose x 2 2 is equal to a or some constant, then and choose x 1 2 to 0, then what we have is 0 a 0. Now, this choice is meaningful in the sense that these two eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other. You can see that the column this multiplied by that, this multiplied by that, this multiplied by that, the sum of that is 0. So, the choice of x 2 2 is equal to a, x 1 2 is equal to 0 gives you immediately an orthogonal Eigen vector to uh, the other Eigen vector both of which have the same Eigen value. So, it is possible to do that, but a is of course, when you normalize it, it becomes a 0 1 0. Okay. So, you have 3 Eigen vectors lambda is equal to 6 corresponds to 2 by root 5, 0 1 by root 5 and lambda is equal to 1 corresponds to 2 eigenvectors 1 by root 5, 0 minus 2 by root 5 and lambda is equal to 1 corresponds to uh, 0 1 0. Now, if you do not choose this 0, but you choose it to some arbitrary you have to ensure that this eigenvector is anyway orthogonal to this eigenvector. Okay. So, you can see immediately that if x 2 x 1 2 is equal to x uh, 2 x 1 2 is equal to minus x 3 2 if you have that you have to ensure that this quantity and this quantity these both eigenvectors are orthogonal. So, I made the easier choice of making them to 0, but you can play around point is uh, when eigenvectors values are degenerate you have to be careful with the way you derive the eigenvectors. It is always better to do the eigenvectors one at a time and make sure that the second eigenvector is orthogonal to the first one and also to other eigenvectors and so on. So, it is a it is a process that one has to do carefully. Of course, you will learn this as you go along and as you solve more and more problems. Okay. So, let me stop at this point. The property or the characteristics of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And in the next lecture for the first part, I will talk a little bit about the functions of matrices and matrix operators as we call them or functions of uh, uh, the operators. We will talk a little bit about the commutativity and uh, properties of matrices. And then the second half of the lecture, we will move on to the next topic namely the solutions of differential equations. Now, it is not possible for me to talk uh, a lot about matrices in this course uh, except to the point uh, up to the point that we need them and we use them. As we need more and more such matrix techniques, we will develop them uh, then and there, but it is important to take a look at the differential equations first order and second order again in a rather quick way in order to start the process of solving the Schrodinger equation, which we will start off as a differential equation and later on only we will use it as an eigenvalue equation for matrices. So, until then thank you very much. <laughs>